All right. Uh, good morning. My okay. name is Alexis. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> uh, good morning. My name is Alexis Morris, and I will be your board administrator for today's meeting, October 3rd, 2024. Uh, for those in the room, please mute your laptops to prevent feedback and echo. This is a reminder that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, Chair Stevens, we're ready to begin. Okay, thank you so much. I will call this meeting to order. And for guests in the room, please make sure to use the sign in sheet if you'd like to make a public comment during the public comment section. And uh, turn it back to you for roll call. Right. Um, uh, Sarah Lucas? Yes. Bill Groff? Here. Brian Prang? Present. Catherine Stevens? Present. Uh, Jeff Pritchard? Um, uh, Jeff Pritchard sent in an email uh, earlier. Um, is this absence excused? Yes, it is. Uh, Steve Nagy? Present. And Jim Knight? Present. All right, and that concludes roll call, and we are at four. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. So we are at the approval of the consent agenda. This is the approval of prior meeting minutes from August 1st, 2024. Uh, the prior meeting minutes and then September 5th, 2024, the work session. So I just need a motion for the board to approve the prior board meeting minutes and work session meeting minutes for August 1st, 2024, meeting minutes September 5th, 2024, work session as presented or amended. Do I have a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion carries. And we'll move on to public comment. Um, so public comments are limited to two minutes per speaker. And do we have anybody signed up for public comment today? Let me check. Yeah. Okay. You go ahead and sign this one for me. Oh, and then we'll go ahead and then I'll make a quick announcement. Oh, wait. We do have one uh, sign up in the room. Um, I will go ahead and make the quick announcement. Um, each speaker, please state your name, city of residence, and or affiliation for the record. Written comments will be acknowledged for the record. The purpose of this portion of the meeting is for us to listen to community feedback. The board and staff will not be making direct comments or answering questions during this time. Your concerns will be taken into consideration as we deliberate on matters. If you have, a, if you have specific inquiries, we encourage you to reach out to us directly via email at mail.aviation at odav.org.gov. Contact information can be found on our website and we will do our best to provide a response. Lad? It's Lad. Yeah. Lad? Lad Ham Henderson? Yes. Lad Henderson, Pacific City, Oregon. I believe he can go now. Just stand at the scene, or? Um, please stand uh, as close to this corner of the west as you can. I brought some information as background information. I'd like to pass it out to the board members. Um, I attended a board meeting back in April closing a project in Pacific City, Oregon, which was going to be a three-quarter scale model of a P-38 on top of a building. The purpose of the building primarily was to get above the floodplain. And in, in that location, uh, the Pacific City Airport has a 
basic elevation of about eight feet mean sea level. And so this building is only two feet above the basic elevation of the airport. So it was going to have to flood proof to four and a half feet above ground level. So that's a six and a half feet above the, the, uh, the runway at the Pacific City. You very kindly told me that I could not do that and agreed with the, the director that that's impossible. I went home thinking that I was going to take you on and went back and looked at the administrative rules and I found sure enough, you know, there are rules and you will find those in the second tab that shows uh, what that looks like. I'd like to show you a picture. This is a picture of a drawing that the, uh, that the uh, Department of Aviation made up and you'll see that on the first section of your handout there. Uh, this is just a blow up of that map and it was drawn in 19 or 2022. You can see the this is the, the ocean is is only about two blocks away. There's also the uh, Nestucca River that runs uh, fairly close to Jason. So in the winter time, this runway floods every year with a mean elevation uh, above sea level of only eight feet. It floods usually two or three times. And uh, but this is a fairly accurate rendition of the administrative rules. You own approximately 75 feet on each, and you bought this, or I don't know if you bought it or were given the airport in 1955. The administrative rules that we're having to deal with were written in 19, well, the Senate bill was the Senate bill 47, passed in 1981, or yes, 1981. But the, the state only owns 75 feet. So the rest of it is, is private owned. But now you're claiming 125 feet from the center line. You own 75 feet from the center line. The county has a primary zone of 100 feet from center line. You claim 125 feet. That destroys my, my property and a lot of others. Almost every property in Pacific City adjacent to your runway is now in violation. There's no grandfather clause. Okay, Mr. Henderson, uh, thank you for your comments today. We do have a two minute time limit, but you certainly can uh, submit your the additional comments for the record in writing. So thank you for, for your presentation today. Appreciate that. It's unbelievable. I drive four hours. I have brought this to your director over a four month period. I have been turned over to the Department of Justice. I have asked for their opinions. I have not given an opinion. They do not, they, they uh, uh, Stacy Postgate comes back and says, we do not make legal decisions on your administrative rules. And so I'm sitting here, do you realize that you have put Tillamook County at risk? financially, because they have approved things in opposition to your administrative rules. And you'll see on page I can one. Hear your, I can hear your frustration, Mr. Henderson, and I, and I acknowledge that. You are welcome to submit your comments uh, in writing, but right now I need to move this forward meeting on to the next uh, agenda item. So thank you very much. Okay, so we will move I on to minutes. the welcome I wait 10 to minutes the Southwest into a, Oregon Regional Airport. And I, Robert excuse me, to, excuse me. You, I've waited 10 minutes into an executive session that was late, running late. I drove four hours to be able to confront this board. You have the responsibility over that department. Why, why don't you usher me out? You know, you're putting the county of Tillamook at risk, and you know it. We've met with Tillamook County, and I want to continue the conversation. Yeah. Uh, thank you, but no thanks. You have a tremendous responsibility to oversee a rogue organization. 
And I hope you take the, you read through that and you understand the position that you are in. Thank you. Okay, and we will move on to Robert Fritzen uh, with the Southwest Oregon Regional Airport for a welcome. Robert just stepped out just really quickly. Okay, so we can just uh, stand by for a minute. Hello, my name is Robert Britson, Deputy Director of the Southwest Oregon Regional Airport. And I guess I wasn't not aware that I would be talking to you today. <laughs> uh, so a couple minutes ago, so um, I'm just going to wing it a little bit. I'll give you a little bit of history of the airport. Uh, the first plane flew in here in the 1930s, landed on the beach. It was delivering mail to the timber industry and became fairly profitable doing that. So kind of made a little airfield and he made a lot of money and then moved to Chicago and started United Airlines, which is kind of interesting because United is the airlines that flies in uh, to the airport here. So that was kind of a nice big circle. In uh, World War II, the Navy took over the airfields um, started to do a lot of improvements, put in a, a huge blimp hangar. We had six blimps here at one point, along with a squadron of Navy uh, planes. The war ended, um, the government surplus, war surplus acts, uh, act kicked in and they turned the airport over to the city of North Bend. The city managed it until the 1990s where they couldn't make it profitable. So they decided they were gonna probably have to close the airport down. Instead, this uh, Port of Bay took it for a couple of years, figuring they could make, make it profitable. They did not, went back to the city of North Bend. City of North Bend was gonna close it. And then um, the voters said, no, we want the airport. So they decided to put it in front of the voters and we became a special district in uh, 2002. So we've been a special district since then. Um, Upcoming projects, um, we do have um, an RSA extension in the works, a glide slope relocation. Uh, because a lot of our infrastructure is from World War II, we have really old concrete. So we're in the middle of slowly replacing all of the old concrete with new concrete. I think there's a tour scheduled for after the meeting and we'll walk you down there and show you our attempt to the arc truck. Yeah, and we're going to go to the arc station. We have a brand new arc uh, station along with some new concrete. Um, we have a cargo facility scheduled to start construction probably February or March of next year. So a lot of a lot of things going on. So you'll everything's in a small little area. So um, you can get to it from the arc station. So we'll probably do a walking tour. Rogers um, had a scheduling conflict. He's the executive director. He was hoping to be here and address you, uh, but he is in Vegas. So, okay. Can I spray Tony with the arc truck? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, uh, I have Bob on standby, so he's ready to go whenever anybody wants to go down there and, and uh, spray things down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I enjoyed your presentation at OAMA. Thank you. It's hilarious. So it's the highlight of the whole thing, I think. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Any questions or anything? Or I figured we could the, discuss the taxing district. That's your primary funding model. It was when we first um, when they first developed the district or created the district. We get about one point five million dollars in taxes, which is not a lot. Uh, we get a million dollars. in on your way in. We own the DHS buildings, um, BLM, we own the senior center, we own the park um, where UPS is. So we own 619 acres. Wow. So we are developing the land side in order to fund the air side. So that most of our income comes from leases. Please. Yeah. So we have uh, Oregon State Police, we have Fuse County Corrections, uh, we have the Oregon Lottery Commission here. 
a lot of other government agencies are on property. So are, are you uh, revenue positive? Yes. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Good. But we keep adding, adding people. So if we keep adding staff, then it's kind of hmm. more buildings we have, more maintenance we need to, to do. So, okay. yep. Thanks. Thank, well, you. thank you for coming and hopefully you're having an enjoyable time and this space works. And if you ever want to come back, it's always available. We can and actually do it at the, the ARF station next time. Yeah. The good. Down and dirty overview. That was. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I, thank you. I mean, there's a lot to say, but it's. Uh, I figure while we're down at the R station, a lot of things will come out. Okay. Well, thank you for your hospitality. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, somebody is currently picking up your lunch, so it should be here shortly. Okay. So if there's anything else you need, there's coffee and water in there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you for hosting. I wish I was there, but I too am in oh, Vegas. Next time. So, yep. <laughs> adding tables and more people. So. Very good. Thank All right. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, so we will move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the director's update. And Kenji. Yes. Hello, everybody, uh, and uh, glad to see everybody. Um, so my presentation can be pretty short. And uh, we'll bring up the slides in just a second. Uh, we're tied up at the moment, so stand by. Yeah, no worries. Yes, that's it. Thank you. Questions? <laughs> 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 Those are going to be brief. <laughs> Give us one quick second to get us set up here. Right. Yeah, you're good. Okay, and then you can be. Hey, okay, where's the presentation? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So. We good? Next slide. Where are we? I don't know. There we go. Oh, cool. wait. Yeah, there we go. All right. You can go to the next one. So I've been I've been busy. I've been visiting more airports. <clears throat> so we got the opportunity to visit more airports in September. So let's see. Alex, Ermi. And Andrea and I went on a tour of a couple more airports. We visited Ashland, Pinehurst, K Falls, Malin, Lakeview, Paisley, Christmas Valley, Alkali Lake, John Day, in a span of two days. Oh. Yeah, so we visited a total of 83, 83 airports since 2023, which is awesome. I'm, I'm almost there to all 98. So I'm, I'm going to get there hopefully uh, next year or, yeah, next year for sure. So if you look, that, that's that's a that's not 14 airports last 14 uh, four airports. Last. Monument, Memelus, and PDX Heliport. So that's all that's left. So that, but when I do those, I visited all public use airports in Oregon. So of course, going out around to these airports, I love taking drone photos, which is which goes into our archive and. If anybody wants those pictures, you're more than welcome to use them however you'd like. So next slide, please. So Ashland is on the left, and then Pinehurst is on the right. Those are two great airports to visit. Uh, Pinehurst was very, very rural. Not as rural as power, so, right? So next slide, please. Uh, Malin is on the left, and then Lakeview is on the right which is kind of interesting because that's the first time I've ever been to both the, the, the area. And it was really interesting to me that Lakeview was actually at the base of a, a sort of a little mountain range, which was really neat. Next slide, please. And then uh, the one on the left is, I think, Paisley, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that is Paisley, which if you don't know, has a great cowboy bar, but unfortunately it was closed when we showed up. 
And then on the right side is Christmas Valley, which is a very, very interesting area of the, the, the state if you've never been there. Have you flown in there, Brian? I got stranded there with a blown cylinder after the Reno Air Races. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so you know, because there are like times, and it was an emergency airport that we used. That was great. All right. Here. Next slide. And then the uh, one on the left is Alkali Lake, which is one of our airports. They don't, it's in its gravel. And so if you fly in there, just be, be careful. The, down toward the far end, there's some tracks that somebody was doing in donuts. So just, just be careful when landing there. And on the, the right side, we didn't get we didn't visit that on, on this last trip, but that's for I thought it was cool and I need to make sure that the slide was even on both sides. So that, that was that was fun. All right, next slide. So we've been pretty busy with the education community outreach side as well. It's always important that we, we need to make sure that folks uh, understand what the uh, Department of Aviation is all about. So next slide. Uh, during this last trip, we actually had the uh, we we presented at the Grant County Grant County Airport Aviation Day, which was really neat because we Haley invited us out and said, "Hey, there's going to be." Uh, a lot of students, and I didn't know how many students, and they forced me to speak in front of like around 60 kids. And you know how hard it is to keep the attention of that many middle schoolers? <laughs> it was next to impossible, but it was uh, all was good. We had a good time. Um, they didn't get, they kept on getting sidetracked because they, there were big planes taken off. And of course, kids go, oh, that's cool. But uh, once I started up flying FPV and showed what it was like, they were like, ooh, it's not. So that was good. So I got to talk to them about the agency. Next slide, please. And then uh, on the policy side, there's always things going on. So next slide. Uh, we've, always been, we've already been talking about this, but looking for funds for the agency. The folks who are on the, uh, visiting us on, online, um, just a heads up, you don't know don't know that our rate for operations has not changed since 1955. So 45 plus 24 equals 69. Right? My addition's correct. <laughs> so it's been it's 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 been a long time since there, there's been a rate uh, rate. And the things that we're not getting to because we don't get enough money to the agency. Uh, we need an aviation system plan update, right? That, that's a big one. Uh, last time was uh, seven, seven years ago. Or more. Um, and then we need to come up with an AM strategy. And then we also need to do economic impact studies because economic impact studies really, really, really help out the uh, airports around the state because they can go to their city councils, they can talk to go to the port authorities and say, hey, this is how much of an impact we have on our communities. It's not only just about resiliency, it's not only just about uh, getting people to in front, but it's, there's actual economic dollar amount that you can point to to help make these arguments. And then of course, we need money to match federal funds for airport infrastructure, and especially with electrification coming on board, we definitely need to look at funding, uh, funding that as well. So next slide, please. And then we talked about this before. I've explained this in, in, in detail, the rationale behind the UAS insurance. And Sarah, I, I, I still remember my lesson. <laughs> yes, thank you. But uh, I've, I've been socializing this out as well. So I've been, uh, whenever we do our roadshow, I've been talking to folks, talking to UAS pilots, talking to insurance folks. I, I had an opportunity to present at the AVSI um, conference, fall conference, that was two days ago. And then I also talked about this at the Awama or Airport Managers Association uh, conference that happened on uh, on Sunday um, and Monday as well. So I, I was able to do that. Next slide, please. And the agency. Uh, next slide. We, well, we kicked off our strategic plan in September, and a lot of you folks are, are aware of that. So we're going to be looking for a lot of feedback from different stakeholders to really help guide our agency uh, for, the, for the next number of years. And, of course, it's a living document. So I'm so stoked because this is one of my priorities, but it got stuck in the procurement morass. But now, we, now it's underway. Stoked. Uh, and then... We'll need to wait for the aviation system plan update for economic impact. 
And I, I told Tracy over at Ben, because she really wanted that, that it's going to have to wait, unfortunately, because of funding. Uh, and hopefully, if we phase it, we can have something started in 2025 or 2026. We talked to the FAA for about a system plan grant as well. So we, we've had those conversations. Next slide, please. And then uh, if we can have a big hand for Alexis. Yay! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, so, of course, she's in charge of the board, and then she's also in charge of our website, and then she's also in charge of our social media. If you haven't seen our uh, new social media handles, it is OR Aviation. So if you, if you have not uh, liked or subscribed, followed or followed, please do. We do a lot on Instagram. <laughs> And it's great because we actually show what the agency is doing on a daily basis, right? It shows the folks out in the field doing the work, it shows our airports. And if you want, if, if you have a really cool shot that you want to share, like if you're playing or your hanger, that's really neat, please share it with us because we want to, we want to show it off too. Cause I think it's a great way to show off aviation in the state, not only to other aviators, but to the general public as well. So, and that's the one thing that we really want to do is really get a lot of subscribers so we can uh, beat TAC Arrow at the number of subscribers to show how cool aviation is. And the other thing that, yes. You're up to 205. Before, before. 205 subscribers, followers? Yes. I think it would be cool if we could get a presentation from Alexis about kind of the new and emerging uh, Website overhaul and oh yeah communication. I think that would be fascinating. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. kind of hear where, where where she's headed with this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll definitely do that. Uh, and then on the planning and program side, Alex is still working his magic with the Excel spreadsheets, and things are getting faster, better, and with uh, with procurement back in house, things are actually getting better. The right names are actually in our contracts, right? And, <laughs> And and our quality assurance has gone up significantly. So um, things are accurate, timely, and quicker to execute. So we can provide better service through, through that way. And then, of course, the agency is leading the way in transparency. One of the things that uh, fundamentally, my my attitude is, if you got something to hide, that's a bad thing. And as soon as you start hiding stuff, it's going to come bite you. So anything that we do, we want to make sure it's publicly available, transparent, and we're open about it. If folks have questions, ask them to us. If you want information, we'll give it to you. That's fine. Unless it's privileged information, we will all that stuff and HR stuff. We can't do that. But that's that that's that's our attitude. And then, like I mentioned, the website and social media. Alexis is taking on the website. Social media is back up and running. Our, Rebranding is underway, and then the cool thing is we're we're working on GIS integration with that that website overhaul, which will be really neat because if if we start making data available on the website to show, hey, this is how much grant money is flowing to certain regions or certain airports, it's really cool. Or take Brandon putting information out there about airport services, it's going to help out land use plan land use planners, right? It's going to make their jobs easier at the county level, at the city level. It's going to make it everything just much easier to access as well. And finally, our navigation on our website sucks donkeys. I'm sorry, but it does, right? Alexis was telling me, hey, even I can't find information. With broken links, emails going nowhere. So we're working on it. And you, Alexis, you deactivated a bunch of uh, links and pages, right? Because they went nowhere. Yes, correct. And then I also updated a lot of our forms as well. So now we're integrating more form stacks in. So I've I've switched out a lot of what maybe wasn't linking to anywhere to now linking to. to yeah, something. we had a page on uh, the feedback for the agency yeah. that didn't go anywhere. It went into ether, which I, from a customer service perspective, that's awful because some people are reporting issues at some of our airports through that, and they're not here back, and it goes into black holes. Like, wait a second. That's not right. Because if you submit something, you deserve a response, and it should be timely. And if it's a, if it's a safety issue, we'll get we'll get them. So, all right. 
uh, of course, uh, if you look at the picture there, yes, we did line up people by uh, height. <laughs> All right. On the advanced air mobility side, next slide. So we've been, I've been, ha I've had the opportunity to attend a lot of conferences. Last year, I spent a lot of time visiting airports, going in state. This, this year, we spent a little bit more time after I recovered from my uh, uh, broken ribs. Uh, speaking about what we're doing. So people at the national level are aware of what we are doing. So I had a, uh, I was down in Las Vegas and spoke at the commercial UAV conference. And I talked about not only what we're doing in Oregon with advanced mobility, I also talked about the multi-state collaborative, which is, uh, which I'll get to in a second. But I was also just out in, the, in Pittsburgh for the National Association of State Aviation Officials uh, and uh, I'm hoping we can get some more folks out there because it's a it's a great opportunity to meet your compatriots. Uh, we spoke about efforts in Oregon, and then uh, when I was there, I was reappointed as a Northwest Regional Board Member, uh, which covers Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, and Utah. So I'm doing that, and then also with appointed the chair of the Emerging Technologies Work Group. So I'll have an inside line on what new tech, tech is coming along. And uh, if you don't know, I've gotten a reputation of wearing the pink shark outfit. Where that come from? <laughs> Where that come from? Reputation? Why? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you the story later. All right. So next slide, please. Oh, I forgot. Yes. Animation? No, no, it's a video. Oh, and, and, and it made an appearance at that uh, Lama, by the way. So I, I walked up on stage and you, in, my, in the pink truck outfit. And I used it as a prop as sort of a reveal. So when I stripped it off, I, I did have clothes on, don't worry. I had a cowboy hat, hat on, a cowboy uh, the, a bolo tie, everything cowboy boots, because I wanted to out cowboy Dan Bandell from, from uh, Pendleton Airport. And I was successful. <laughs> So with that, any questions? Not okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Kenji. Any questions? I can't see anybody, so if you do, just holler. Oh, yeah, uh, Kenji, on the website, as you're doing feedback, is that tied into the signage at the remote airports and, and, and similar forms that people can self-report any issues at the airports or take photos, that kind of stuff. No, that's actually different. Uh, th there's there's a phone number or text, right? Yeah. Know, so that, that actually goes directly to, to Don Ridge Creek. Oh, okay. Yeah, and off. So that, that's been fantastic because people take pictures and do stuff and they send it over to keeps us informed. Yep. And we haven't implemented that at all airports yet, but we should start at some of those goals. Okay. You find out about the cookies on it. Okay. So like, there's not wait, any wait. other. Oh, go ahead, Sarah. The cookies on the run runway. Do we have an agreement with ODOT out there to go and grade it? Because we don't have that type of equipment. Do we? Uh, so the Alpha Lake Airport specifically, it's, it's pretty soft gravel. Um, we didn't have the equipment we needed to address it when our staff were out there last, but uh, they'll be prepared and okay. kind of fix it next trip. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Very good. Thanks, Kenji. And then we'll move on to the planning manager update. Everybody, I will. Share my screen here. Presentation up. Anna, I thought you worked at efficiency. <laughs> this presentation up. Well, there you go. Thank 
Sorry. Oh, okay. Anyways, uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Goose Bay and Planning Manager update. So today, what I really wanted to focus on was just acknowledging, recognizing all of the hard work that comes out of the very small <laughs> team that we have. Um, not just at ODAV, I mean, you know, not just planning, but all of ODAV. And of course, I'm focusing on planning here a little bit, tuning our own horns. But so everybody, I think, knows everybody that's on this slide. Andrea is here, of course, or me is here, myself, and then Brandon is attending virtually. He's our aviation planner. And you may recognize some of the, the bullet points down below, even here in this room. Some of them are a little bit difficult to see. So I'll just all run right through them. So and Andrea's primary roles are our ASAP system, or our ASAP, which is our Aviation System Action Program, which includes SOAR and, and CORE grants. Our Pavement Evaluation Program, or PEP, and our Pavement Maintenance Program, or PMP. Brandon, planning, land use, research analysis, such as our tall structure analysis, for that come in on, you know, when there's any construction that's done, and we'll get into some of these numbers of these things a little bit later in the presentation. And then as Ken, as you mentioned, uh, GIS, that's something that we've recently, you know, brought into the agency. We've been working with ODOT, they, of course, have a GIS program, they've installed it on our uh, primarily just Brandon's <laughs> computer at the moment. That's something that we're starting from scratch. Excited to have that. Um, it'll be a great way to showcase some inventory of which airports have fuel or which airports have don't have fuel or have an FBO and, and so forth. That's a good question, Robert. Yep. Are you just providing layers for those of us GIS users or are you providing an app that will actually do a GIS? Yeah, it would just start with one. Layers. Just yeah, yeah. You know, I just want the layers. Yeah. So I, okay. Yeah. Eventually, make it more fancy with something like an app. But yeah, that'd be good. Okay. <laughs> I don't think we want to uh, sort of reinvent the wheel. We're not going to repeat information like AirNav and those those slides. I can drop it on the layers, and then that's perfect for me. Yeah. Yeah. No dot has some layers that sure. that we can already start with, and then of course we'll we'll expand from there to what's more useful for for us and and the agency. And then Ermi um, also works along with Andrea on our ASAP programs or ASAP grants. And a couple of things that are different than maybe how we did it in the past at the agency. So Ermi also works on our FAA grant administration, so all of our applications, and of course, follow through that entire process that goes to the FAA. And then our procurement contract. So also, as Kenji mentioned earlier, we brought procurement in-house that came up at the last couple of board meetings. We talked about how that does save the agency of us about $180,000 per biennium. Great savings for us. And not to repeat too much what Kenji said, but it, it's been great for some of the turnover, the efficiency, just our turnaround times have been, been great. And, and we'll get into that in another slide. And then myself, just all of those things. And then plus work with Kenji a lot on the AEM and UAS side and on our government and our external relations, spending time with legislators and you know, anybody in the public, so our counties, cities, the League of Oregon, cities, Association of Oregon Counties, if I got that correct there. And moving on. So core grants. So as of September of this year, core grants have funded, or have, I should say, contributed funds towards totaling about 13 and a half million toward a total project costs of just over 175 million. And the asterisk is for, this is based on grant applications that have been executed. So, and, and as you see down on the table below, and especially 2024, we have about 33 grants that are still in setup. So the, whatever those project cost numbers are, those are not yet included in either of those two numbers up top. So if I was to guess, you know, we'd probably be a little bit closer to maybe the 15 and 190, maybe even 200 million, um, assuming, you know, every, all the, the, the projects that are currently set up would, would push forward, be executed. And then primarily due to COVID and, and just some, some vacant positions, turnover, whatnot, here about a year and a half ago, the core program was you know, behind on about 40 inspections that just needed to be done at airports and just about every corner of the state. And so Andrew, Andrew and I and Kenji, uh, kind of in line with all of these airport visits, have uh, inspected, you know, visited, and inspected over 40 airports that had core um, related projects. Uh, 
just been been great. It's been a great opportunity to go out and meet with the airport managers. Yeah. And then, by the way, we just visited Florence Airport as well, which had a brand new paving project to the apron. So if you fly into there, check it out. Because the pavement is beautiful. And the paint is beautiful as well. Yep. And, yeah, but again, as Kenji mentioned, we've visited over 80 airports, which is quite a few. Not very many left. Um, we did, a, let's see, we were at 97 public views. I think we're actually at 96 now. As of a week or so ago, one of the airports has, uh, has gone private. And table at the bottom, I guess, pretty self-explanatory again. You know, how many are in setup versus executed. Pavement Evaluation Program, or PEP, has been just moving along steadily. I'm not going to necessarily list them all off, but you'll see the our 2024 airports. These are... Pretty much completed. We're just waiting on the last few documents from our, our PEP consultant here. And then that, that, of course, gets us moving along in the next cycle of PMP. And then to the right, you'll see the 2025 airports. We'll be getting PMP, PEP, sorry, inspections next year, very soon. PMP, Pavement Maintenance Program, same deal, been moving along strong, a lot of airports. Sorry, these numbers are small, for, or the airports are small for us here in the room. 2024, Region 3, and Region 4. 2025 is going to be especially busy. Again, just primarily due to, to COVID and vacancies, turnover and whatnot. There was, we got behind about a year. So after 2025, we'll be, we'll be caught up again. So we'll have an extra region or two for next year. We're, we're excited for that. We're excited to get caught up. We're working closely with our, our consultants to really push that along. We'll be going into contract here soon. So just keep that moving along as quickly as we can. Land use and airspace. So this is Brandon's field and aeronautical studies. He's done over 600 and probably 50 now, exceeding last year's count at this point. And those studies include many things, uh, cranes, housing development, solar installations, you know, cell phone towers, utility projects, and so on. Several of which of those that Brandon has performed those studies on were identified as potential hazardous to aviation in their area. Land use, we don't quite have the best way to really track what our exact numbers, on, numbers are. So that's something that Brandon and I will continue to work on over the next year or so to see if we have a better way to track so we can't figure out how many land use applications and development permits we are reviewing. And then GIS implementation. Uh, as stated earlier, it's pretty new to the agency, but we are we are getting set up and we are excited to you know, announce a go live date money end of 2025. That would be both available to um, of course internally and then to the public. FAA grant administration. So 2024, we had eight airport specific projects. Three of those were AIP, five were BIL, totaling at about 4 million. Putting those airports in the list, Hudge Grove did have two. And then of course for system plan, 2024 was limited to the PEP program. 25 is gonna be a very, very, very busy year. Sorry, Ernie. <laughs> We're doubling that number <laughs> to uh, 16 airport specific projects, six of which are AIP, 10 of which are BIL, about 10 and a half million. The primary reason we will have so many airports is to really just expend as much of the current BIL uh, and, and, and PE funding that we have that's been kind of floating around being transferred between airports. So we have a ton of projects. On our list, uh, if anybody here wants to see our, our, our CIP list, we submit that. That's that will be available, and then our our system plan will of course include PEP again. And then we're working to see if we can squeeze in a phased approach to the or to updating our Oregon Aviation Plan. Um, those get very expensive, so ideally we would do something more along the lines of updating chapters, you know, specific chapters or topics, and not you know one massive uh, project. Procurement Contract Administration. So as of July 1st this year, procurement transitioned from ODOT to 
Oh, Dave, to us. Save us some money. It's great. We've been doing a uh, everything ourselves now. Um, we we haven't had you know a massive amount of contracts so far. Um, for me, five or six roughly that we've you know basically done ITBs on, and then of course you know worked on our own contracts. Yeah, the price agreements. So not very many yet, but as the last side slide indicated, sixteen projects. That, that's going to be at least that, if not you know basically double or triple triple that when you when you actually start working down the line and getting towards construction. And again, it, it's been it's been great on our our turnaround times, much quicker. We we really try to push to get a turnaround time in less than a week on any of our contracts. Of course, you know those. Sometimes they're still required to go to DOJ over the 250,000 turnaround times with DOJ have been great. We've been working a lot closely with uh, two individuals there, and that's been, been awesome. And we're currently working also with DOJ to redo our entire, all of our, our procurement documents, forms, templates, you know, our contracting templates are just making sure we're checking every box as we go through this transaction. QC is improved too, right? Yeah. 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 Our, our contracts are much more consistent than I believe they've been uh, previously. And, we're, you know, we don't need as many things as ODOT may have included in some of their contracts. We've, it's provided an opportunity to just kind of clean things up to what better fits ODAP. AEM, as you mentioned, some of the conferences around AEM, UAS. These are the two big ones that I had recently was also able to attend. So commercial UAV, a lot of important sessions or a lot of you know different topics, including everything here on the screen. <laughs> Construction, UAS pilots, policy, workforce development, education, and so on. And then the advanced air mobility multi-state collaborative. And actually the one I, I missed in here, I should have included was also the FAA UAS symposium, AM and UAS symposium. These provide a great opportunity primarily to, to meet with other, of course, the FAA, the feds, and also other states that are, a lot of them are in the same position. We're really just trying to figure out, you know, how is a AM going to be implemented? What is that going to look like, you know, for land use, policy making, OAR? What are the potential opportunities for, you know, funding uh, positions and, and being able to implement minimum viable infrastructure? I think Kenji's favorite uh, keyword uh, at Different airports, not, not only state airports, but all the public use airports. Key considerations for digital and hard infrastructure. <clears throat> yeah, it's not minimum viable infrastructure because that, that we just don't want to say have states go, oh, we did the minimum viable infrastructure, we're, we're good. So it's the key considerations and uh, <clears throat> yeah. in the next one. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, any uh questions? I kind of blew right through that. So so when you contract administration is now in house is DOJ your legal team that's yeah anything with this yeah so we're working with DOJ on on basically all of our templates and then anything over the two hundred fifty thousand dollar mark or say yeah yes good job all Thanks. right any additional questions. Okay, well, it looks like we are exactly on time. So based on our agenda, we would take a lunch right now uh, and then come back. If everyone's in agreement, we can do that. What are our thoughts? Oh, yes. Stand by, we're checking to see for, for lunch real quick. Let me just see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cool sticker. Two cool sticker. Three cool sticker. <laughs> <clears throat> what would put? We'll be here in just a couple minutes. Okay. Five. Okay. Should we do the next? Tony, do you want to do sure. yours real quick? Uh, Catherine, is it okay if uh, it looks like lunch is going to be yep. a few more minutes? So just run sure. through uh, Tony. Okay. Yep. Let's just keep moving. Hey, 
update for you all and not keep us from lunch. Um, I did want to address before I get into the presentation the public testimony. Um, ODAV, so Brandon, our planner, and uh, myself met with Roma County's uh, planner and uh, at Pacific City and with um, uh, with the public and including um, Mr. Anderson, who, who provided testimony this morning. Um, the topic of that meeting was on the, the county's airport overlay zone and what FAA and, and what ODAM's priorities and standards are for generally aviation airports. So we did have a, a robust discussion with the intent to come back and have another meeting, which we are working with the county to schedule that as well. Um, that was published. The, the meeting was published in a local paper in Pacific City and I look forward to continuing that discussion. Before I move on from, from that piece, any questions on that? No questions, just given the, the board's role, kind of as we've been talking about an advisory to the agency, perhaps a, a explanation to this individual also, because I think he expected the board to take some kind of action associated with that. And maybe Stacy can provide some update as well at some point, but I felt he was perhaps addressing the wrong group in coming here. There's not anything that we can specifically do to address to direct the agency to do something more than what you are already doing. And so though I appreciate his testimony, and I think Kathleen's right, uh, we, I think he may have had a misrepresentation about the role of what the board can do or potentially do or not do. Um, the Pacific City State Airport <laughs> has a number of challenges, and we have worked closely with Mr. Henderson uh, this, the better part of this year. Uh, certainly understand where he's coming from and his frustrations, but um, we will continue to work with him and, and uh, uh, follow up with him and again schedule that meeting with the Tillamook County to address hopefully the his concerns. The yeah, there's no doubt about that. I just meant to understand, I felt that he was trying to address us, that we could somehow <clears throat> have to do something or have some resolution and that's not within the scope of what the board does in relation to the agency. I think he needs some more information perhaps about that as well. Yeah. And so he doesn't feel frustrated continuing to come to the board while he's working with you for, for some type in the county for some type of resolution. And when we did step out of the table for a minute, um, I did continue conversation with Mr. Henderson, just that I do want to continue working with him and, and having uh, hopefully productive discussions and uh, addressing his concerns and uh, looking forward to doing that. Thanks. Okay, going into the presentation. This, uh, this was just a, a title slide image and we'll move on from that. That was uh, the Nahalem Bay State Airport. <laughs> And uh, it has been a busy season for firefighting. All of the airports listed here are airports that we had a uh, fairly extensive firefighting presence, whether it's a full helibase or, or a number of aircrafts parked uh, at the airports and, and helping uh, address the firefighting need all around the state of Oregon. Um, we don't have any airports currently closed for fire, firefighting activity, but uh, again, extensive use this this entire season. We had a great year mowing this year. Uh, is my slide gonna stuck on my old here? We did have a great year mowing this year. Um, between two full time maintenance specialists and two part time staff hauling tractors to all twenty eight, uh, well, all but one of our twenty eight state airports. Uh, they really are getting into their stride and working efficiently, and uh, we're on top of mowing, uh, I think, better than I've seen in, in the last four years. And last year was a very good year also. So really proud of them and the hard work they're doing on a daily basis throughout the entire uh, summer and our mowing season. Um, same with painting. This is the second year that we've implemented our, our new painting equipment and uh, adding all of our 20 airports on a, a four-year rotation so that they can be kept current and uh, refreshed with new markings. And so they have already completed, after uh, wrapping up mowing, they've already completed all of the airports um, that were on the list for painting this year. 
So they're also getting very proficient and really proud of the work they're doing there as well. Now they're working on deferred maintenance. And uh, this is the electrical building out at Chiloquin. And it's been a long time since that building has had any maintenance, but uh, now it is repainted and uh, protected from the elements for uh, the foreseeable future. And not just Chiloquin, but they're also getting out to all the airports, catching up with deferred maintenance, uh, electrical buildings out at Wasco. Uh, we're getting a new one at Selects Bay, but um, and they're catching up on work at Cottage Grove as well. And then going into the winter season, this is tree removal season. So this was a tree that had fallen at Lebanon earlier that, uh, that our staff had to clean up. But uh, we are, are working on uh, getting into tree removal season this winter. And operations have been very busy working through airport inspections and updating uh, all the master records for the, uh, the 32 airports that they inspected this year. So uh, beyond just inspecting all the state airports, they do the master record of the 5010 inspections for all public use airports in Oregon. And, uh, and they got all of those done. And Kristen's going to go into that in more detail with our KPMs. So for upcoming projects, we have the Aurora State Airports, the surface seal and markings project. That project was substantially completed back on, in July, but the uh, final markings application is actually happening today. They had the run rate closed so they could get into the connecting taxiways yesterday. And then they should be wrapping up most of the work today and any final remaining work will be done by tomorrow. The Aurora Airport Master Plan. There's no update since our previous meeting. We had, uh, we had shared our uh, refined preliminary alternatives in the July 30th PAC meeting. And uh, our next PAC meeting is October 15th. And then the Cape Blanco uh, runway rehab project that's ongoing. I'm going to share a photo of that here in just a minute. And the uh, prospect runway reconstruction is scheduled to begin next spring. The Solets Bay, we have a few other projects coming up, and that's the Solets Bay runway, the Aurora runway rehab, and the Cottage Grove apron. Um, those are anticipated to begin spring and summer of next year, although we are expecting the, the contractors trying to get into Solets Bay this fall to. Um, to start work on that, so we will be sending out notice when we have more information on the schedule for that that work. Uh, we're looking at potentially up to four weeks of runway closure this fall. Are you starting to see bids uh, more in line with your anticipation, your your uh, estimates for work, or are you still seeing them uh, pretty inflated? Yeah, more in line <clears throat> what they have been for sure. So this is just the notice that we sent out for the, the final markings application of Aurora. Right now, again, the, the red area in the runway, the connecting taxiways, that work has been completed. They're in the green and blue areas right now. That should be wrapping up today and tomorrow. Yes, quick question on that. This is for my learning and just want to understand it. So when we're not just updating markings, but we're actually changing in doing meeting new standards and all that kind of stuff, who's designing all of that is that your team, or is that to have to go out to to all the? What's the process for when we're going to update sure. the standards, the markings? Yeah, so that's typically uh, designed by our engineers, by our airport uh, engineering firm. Uh, this was you have a contract firm for yep, that. Okay, yep. Century West that. And and even this project for for replacing existing markings uh, was still designed by them. Um, and the couple changes that were made with the widening of the non very boundary marking. And adding in the enhanced. So that's all done by the engineering correct century. Yep. Okay. Exactly. So I was just curious how that yeah. got done. Yeah. And then your guys just measure it out and do all the just get it down. Yeah. Well, the the contractor applied the markings, and then when we go back in and we're just refreshing what's existing, um, we just match what's already on the ground. Well, you know, this is what I'm talking about when you're changing it, updating the specs, so changing the markings. What was my question? Sure. Right. Hey, we had two, just a quick update on VPDs. We had two VPDs since our last meeting. In fact, both occurred the very day after I presented to the board on VPDs. Um, 
there was a personal, both were personal vehicles uh, that had accessed the taxiway from uh, through the fence property. So, um, so no real update since uh, since our last meeting on VPDs, but other than I just wanted to share we had two more. And what's the status of rulemaking? Uh, the same from from our last meeting. So ongoing um, planning to bring the final rulemaking uh, with the the rulemaking advisory committee and public success to the board uh, uh, later at the end of this year. Yeah, I, I think the pad process is pretty much sucked all the year out of the room. So it's just a prioritizing our our efforts at this point. Yeah. When and just a request, maybe if you can, when we see these, especially on that topic, which is very hot with the FAA. We just see like year over year data, perhaps as well, to see if we're doing better or worse um, from your outreach and your work, just to see if there's it's being affected. I mean, you, you do all the outreach in the world and people still violate policy or whatever, but at least you can see if it's it maybe had some effect. Yeah, we'll be tracking this very closely and we'll uh, provide updates for sure. <laughs> FAA has been tracking very closely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is just a drone photo that uh, our operations staff was able to get um, of the Cape Blanco project. And uh, this shows the runway being repaved, the center 75 feet. Uh, the original runway was 150 feet wide, and the center 75 feet is uh, now completely repaved. And the at the entire uh, runway length, 5,100 feet long. And... Uh, right now, they have all of the trenching out every 200 feet for the edge lighting uh, that they're bringing into the, the new uh, runway edges. This also shows just on the left end, um, on the kind of foreground, and then on the right end of the background, the tree clearing that our staff had done last year uh, to accommodate the pappies. And so we are very excited that the pappies are going to be included in this project. We weren't really sure because prices did come in just a little bit high, but uh, through some value engineering uh, and reduced oil prices, uh, we were able to get the puppies included. And if anybody wants to see an updated photo of Cape Blanco, I was, I was, we were just out there yesterday to took photos and they'll be available for if anybody walks them in the next couple of days, I'll get them out to Lexus. And I'm definitely planning to bring those to you in the next update as well. So watch our social media. Just a quick update I sent out a government meeting this uh, the state parks at the Nahalem Bay State Park, they are beginning a, a fairly significant project improving access and services at the Nahalem Bay State Park. And it will affect, uh, again, services and access for a fairly significant amount of time uh, through, let's see, November 1st through June 30th next year. Um, but they graciously have. Uh, worked with us and said that the airport continue to, could continue to remain open, except that access and um, water service, uh, other facilities within the state park would not be accessible. And so uh, it's, it's pretty much the airport footprint only for access for the better part of um, this winter and next, uh, the next year. So uh, I will send out updates uh, when I get them from state parks and We'll keep everyone informed as the project progresses and, and hopefully things return to normal when it completes. Starting November 1st, our four seasonal airports are closing. That's the Crescent Lake State Airport, Mackenzie Bridge, Sandy Junction, and Tokate. They will reopen May 1st or when conditions allow, uh, depending on the amount of snowfall and surface uh, conditions. As we come into winter, just a reminder, this is the same uh, information I shared last year. We do not report surface conditions at most of our airports. We do report conditions primarily at the Joseph State Airport and the Aurora State Airport. We will issue field condition notams or surface condition notams when our staff observe reportable conditions. Um, most other airports are not going to have those surface conditions reported. Our ability to plow is extremely limited. We have a uh, plow at Joseph, and then we have some plow equipment based in Salem, and we will prioritize the Aurora Airport as we have done in the past. And then, uh, depending on the nature of the event and uh, the forecast, we, we may be able to plow other airports as well. We do not have de ice equipment or the ability to apply de ice at any of our airports. We just don't have 
the equipment, the resources, or the permits to do that uh, through DEQ. So we do not have that ability. Um, we do appreciate if pilots do fly into an airport and they want to give us an update, you know, if, uh, if there was some contamination that that we should be aware of or uh, any other hazards, always appreciate those updates. Um, and then we will uh, issue notams whether when service conditions are not reported or if we do have any service conditions. And then um, anytime, reach out to us if we have any more uh, information that we can share over the phone. Uh, the last time <coughs> we did have a pilot fly in there, or if, and if we have any uh, field conditions, we're always happy to share that over the phone. As always, through uh, Gov Delivery, this is the best place to get the most current information from us. Um, whether it's the Nahalem Bay Airport, um, uh, the projects at the state's park, or uh, any other projects we have in our airports, please do subscribe to the specific airport contact groups that you want to get information for. And for the airport master plan, if, uh, if you're interested in that topic as well. If you receive, if someone forwards you a, a gut delivery that has been sent out, you can click manage subscriptions at the very bottom, and then you can add your uh, email. That's a good way to subscribe as well. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank Thanks, you, Tony. Appreciate that. Any questions? Okay, and uh, just a status check on lunch. It's here. Okay, so should we break for a bit? How long would you all like? About a half an hour? It's good. Sounds good. Okay, so let's come back at 1250, 1250. See you all back for the rest of the meeting then. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, he's not. Um, and so I'm, I'm very grateful. Hey, you guys, it's Stacy. Everybody can hear you. This is what happened before. I just wasn't online, so you might want to mute whatever the camera is on everybody.
Okay, very good. Yes, I'm here and we will move forward with our agenda item uh, from the finance manager update. Okay, I will share my screen, see my presentation. Okay, um, so I was going to give a staff update and talk about Alexis, but can and she stole my thunder there. <laughs> so, no, sorry. <laughs> but I was going to introduce Alexis and say everything she's working on, but we already went over that. Um, so I'm going to talk about our 2024 key performance measure in our annual report, and, and then I'll go over the Aviation Best Word Practice Survey. Okay, so the annual performance progress report, so we do it every year. It's due October 1st. And then I always present it to the board. Um, and it's also it's um, part of the legislative process. So any changes have to go through that process as well. Um, it's something that all agencies in the state do. Um, and it goes to our legislative fiscal office, it goes to the chief financial office, it goes in the budget, it goes to DAS. <laughs> um, so our first KPM we report on is the percentage of runways in good or better condition. So this is um, looking at the runway pavement condition. So we base this on the PCI index. So that's the pavement condition index. Um, so it's really looking at how good our pavement evaluation and the pavement maintenance program is doing. Um, so you can see the last five years we've stayed, you know, between 91 to 95%. So we're pretty consistent with that. Um, and I know um, Alex already talked about the projects going on this year for um, pavement maintenance. Um, and he kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, so that is that one. Do you have any questions on that? Yeah. Is that all public use airports or state owned? Oh yeah, good good question. It's all public use airports that are paved. So I believe it's 66 airports that we're reporting on. Um, the next one is the percent of runways meeting approach surface standards. So this is the one that we have a proposed um, change in language to. Um, so the new language we were proposing is the percent of state-owned airport approaches meeting or in the process of meeting visual approach surface standards, excluding those with permanent terrain obstructions. Um, so I wanted to show um, the past um, KPM and then also show um, what the new KPM is in 2024. So in the blue, it's showing we were previously reporting on all airports and uh, all public use airports. And um, we were also this year reporting on state owned airports. So that's the 48%. Um, so we, how we got that is there are 49 um, total approaches at our state owned airports and 19 of those met the approach surface standards. And then four of those, I mean, five, I'm sorry, are in the process of meeting. So that's how we came up with the 48%. And um, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that or. Yeah, the 49 is the obstruct the standards. Um, I'm sorry, they're the approaches that don't have permanent obstructions. So we have 56 total, and then uh, seven of those have permanent obstructions that um, that are not possible to meet standard. Do you have any questions on that? So based on that, will we reflect the the target? Will that always stay at 94% when you're saying that there are some that just never will be. So 94 is unattainable. Well, we already took that into consideration. We already subtract. There was seven that had the permanent. So we already subtracted those. So about 94 is those are not a factor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so the next one is also an operations one. So this is the number of public use airport inspections conducted. So every um, year operations aims to do um, quarterly inspections at all of our 28 state owned airports. And then they also do all of the NIPIUS airports on a three year um, schedule. So this year um, they did 32 of the NIPIUS um, 5010 inspections. And so those are funded by the FAA. And so uh, operations did 100% of the um, 5010 inspections. Mm -hmm. 
And then they did 103 out of 112 of the quarterly inspections. And so um, the ones that they didn't do were the very remote ones. So like, for example, Oahe had um, one done for the year. So instead of doing the four every quarter, and then the other ones were some of the remote airports that we can't get to every quarter. But all airports had at least one for the year, right? That first one, sorry, just to add that Hawaii, um, our first visit was in June, and we are aiming to have 100% uh, of the airports inspected for, for the next year. Okay. Okay, so the next one is the percentage of federal funds available that are obligated or spent. Um, so when we first set this up, um, we only had the um, AIP funds that we were dealing with. Um, so it was making sure that we were at least transferring all of our uh, NPE funds. So we get 150,000 for all of our NIPIUS airports or 12 NIPIUS airports per year. And so we either use those for a project or we can transfer them to another project just to make sure that they don't go back to the FAA. Um, so it's making sure that we're doing that. And now we're also considering the BIL funds that we've been getting to. Um, so we're taking a look at those and make sure that we are you know, planning for all of them that we were obligated. Um, and so, because I believe we have from 2021 to 2026 to spend those BIL funds. So those are all on target to, to spend. So we have, and I think Alex went over the projects that we were doing, made a note of um, projects. So I think Alex already went over what projects he had scheduled for uh, 2024. Oh, so the next one is customer service. Um, so this is based on a survey that we send out to everyone who has signed mm -hmm. up to this get our emails. So it's over 6,000 people get the survey and then it asks them um, questions about our customer service. So this is based on um, questions that all state agencies have to ask. And so it has to do with our accuracy, our availability of information, expertise, helpfulness, timeliness, and then our overall customer service. Um, so this year, um, the green is 2024 results. So we ranged from 20 or I'm sorry, 71% to to 74% um, this year. So we're kind of in the range of what we have been um, the past five years. Last year, we dropped significantly. Um, I believe we were around 49%, 51%. Um, and last year, there was a lot of people who answered it who, who um, were around the Oklahoma mm -hmm. Airport. So they identified as neighbors of the Aurora Airport. And so there was a lot of noise complaints on the last one. So this one, um, we do give um, customers a chance to put in the comments. Um, so we haven't got a chance to look at those yet, um, but I'm going to download all the comments. And so Kenji can look at them and all uh, the managers can look at them and see if we can improve our customer service for the next year. And I think it'll also improve the engagement that we're going to. Yeah, we're doing a lot of engagement and, um, you know, working on the website. And so hopefully that will improve the customer service too. Uh, the next one, percent of aircraft registered. Um, so this is looking at our aircraft registrations, how we're doing on collections, basically. Um, so we have 3,640 aircraft um, that are active in our database, and we have 462 that are expired. Um, and aircraft registration, that goes to fund our grant match and also airport maintenance. Um, and so we have, you can kind of see, we've been kind of in the 89 to 91% range for the past five years. Um, and so we dropped a little bit below our standard this year. So um, Jerry is our aircraft registration specialist. So her and I and Lisa is our accountant. We're kind of looking at our collection process and seeing if there's anything we can do to be a little bit more efficient so we can kind of bump that number back up to 90% for next year. Um, the next one is the best practices met by the board. So this is based on the survey that you we've gotten within the past five years. I know in 2022, um, it dropped down a little bit uh, because we didn't have a process in place for giving the executive director a performance review. And so we've changed that. So that's that's gone up a little bit because of that, I believe. And I'm going to go into the questions in a little more detail too. Um, but we do, um, the questions are based on DAS and LFO um, they provide those for us, and all boards in the state use those same questions. 
So it's based on the um, these five things here. So the executive director selection, expectation and feedback, strategic management, strategic policy development, fiscal oversight, and board management. And this is what it actually broke down to. So you can see we got 100% on all of the questions except for two. Um, so the two were that the agency's mission and high-level goals are current and applicable, and that the board is appropriately involved in the review of agency's key communications. Um, and we're, you know, about ready to do the strategic plan. So I'm hoping that you know, with that, we can increase both of those up to 100% in the future. So, and that is our last KPM. Did you have any questions? Um, is I know that customer service has always, or has been, as long as I've been on the board, has been uh, one of the KPIs. Mm -hmm. With the governor's emphasis on certain things, is that one of the ones that she requires? A, it is, it is required. That's yes. what I thought. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, so the other ones we are able to um, change. Well, and the board one is required as well. The other ones we're able to, you know, based on our agency. And so we do have an opportunity every two years that we can make changes to them. So we can add new ones, we can um, remove them or make changes. So, yeah. you know. And one of the other things is I think part of the strategic plan, we should we should be working on the communication strategy as well. Because I think there's there there has been an overall the uh, overall communication strategy that covers everything that we need to do in terms of multiple channels, whether that be social, whether that be website, whether that be outreach into individual communities. Uh, I think there's lots of places where we can improve on that, especially messaging, messaging correctly, because coming from sort of that marketing background, how to message things is so crucial. And I think that hasn't been taken into account in, in the past. And I think we have opportunities there. Hey, thank you, Kristen. Any other questions for Kristen? Okay, hey, I'm not seeing any. So uh, next up on the agenda uh, is an opportunity for updates from board members. Does anybody have any updates they'd like to share? I don't know if you could hear me all right, but I, I, I do. I'd like to talk about the, my representation of, the, of our organization for the final review committee on the Connect grants. So I, I'd take a, just a couple of minutes and, and kind of give you a real brief overview. There was $46 million available for the Connect funding. Uh, and there was only funding for 19 we ran out of money essentially after the night after the number nineteenth. Those grants, uh, five were railroad, uh, five were marine. Uh, these are the ones that made the top nineteen, and nine of them were our airports. So we did really quite well in, in that final scoring. Uh, Redmond, ten million. Medford, three million. Christmas Valley, about half a million. Oak Ridge, one point eight million dollars. Uh, Grant County was a million, PDX was 3.6 million, uh, Ontario uh, 105,000, Columbia Gorge 1.7, uh, Roseburg was 172. So out of the 42, 46 million available, 22 million went to airports. So I, I think that we did really, really well. And folks that are listening in, if you want more information, you can go to Department of Transportation's website, just type in Connect Grants. You'll see a plethora of information that I'm, and I'm really summarizing for all of you of what took place during that meeting. Uh, it was an honor to be able to be a part of that. It was eye-opening experience. And uh, I didn't I didn't know if I, I, I presumed this might happen. So I was asked to speak on every single airport grant request. Uh, the background of what was requested, at least within <clears throat> actually uh, within the top 19 is really where we focus. But I did have a chance to talk about every single airport airport grant. What I wasn't expecting was also being targeted as former executive director of a, of a marine terminal of a port. Also speak about what I knew about the the, uh, the marine grants. Some of them I knew very little about, but many of them that I did. So. Uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity and uh, really pleased for our organization to get that kind of money. 
wish it was more. Does that, does that mean you're 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 nominating yourself or volunteering for the next round? <laughs> <laughs> I you know it was really hard for me because I, I really thought personally um, you know, we had instructions that once you get to the final review committee, your emphasis has to be on what is good for Oregon. So uh, it was really a thorough instructions about not trying to promote your own you know personal interests or your organization's interests. Uh, and I can tell you not not everybody necessarily agreed to that instruction. Right. I, I, I think I did a really good job. The ones that I, I was just fine about were on top of my list was Eugene and I was hoping about that. But these I learned a lot from these and uh, I, I think applicants should take a look at what is the total amount available and take a look at your grant request. And when you're hitting 10 percent, 15, 20 percent of the total amount available, you know, it's going to be very difficult for those types of grants within that limited amount of money to be able to move forward. So speaking of which, moving forward, October 10th is where the OTC, Oregon Transportation Commission, meets. Um, and then they can change this order in any way that they seem fit for the state. The past history has been they don't normally change. Once it gets past, once it gets through the, the uh, final review committee, um, then that's usually cast in stone at that point. But it could change. Questions? Yes, thanks. Uh, it was a good intellectual mm -hmm. profession. <laughs> so I, I learned a lot from just, just going through that, of, of looking at every single airport, what were their needs, what it uh, gives me a different perspective. We just simply need more money, a lot more money. So. Yeah, thank you so much for that update, Jim. I appreciate that. Um, I really. I was want to just say also appreciate staff the hard work that they put in and the mm -hmm. grant requests that we that you know that were submitted, and it was particularly Oak Ridge. That was probably the one that I stepped over a little bit over the line of promoting. And I think it was my comment was, if we don't fund this now, we're going to lose this. It's, it's inevitable, and I think that had a major impact on people's decisions to move that higher up in the ranking. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I think That's that it. goes with your statement, Jim, about, you know, at that level, you're supposed to be looking at what's a, for the greater good for the entire state and that being such a key firefighting yeah. airport, it, it indeed is very important. Yeah, I agree. Any other board updates? Uh, Chair, uh, just one thing we're having uh, this Saturday, the 5th, um, Will be our 25th anniversary. We're having uh, we've always called it the open house in Hillsborough Airport, but we're now rebranded it as uh, the block party. Uh, it's open to the community. Usually, uh, several thousand folks come out and get a. We have behind the scenes tours of several of our uh, of our tenants' FBOs. Um, it's not an air show by any means. It's more of just what your community airport does. And so we have vendors. We'll have. Uh, food carts. We have aircraft or airport maintenance equipment out there for kids to climb all over, and um, as well as information just about you know what's going on at the facility. So that's this Saturday, the fifth of October. So anybody online is listening uh, from eleven a.m. to three in the afternoon. Thanks. Great. Thank you for that, Steve. Any other board members have an update? Okay, hearing none, we'll uh, move on to other business. Is there any other business that board or staff would like to bring up at this time? Chair Stevens, if I would mind just real briefly, is I've been thinking about our, our task that it's, we talked about this morning a lot, and I hope that we can get to a point where we can identify the criteria that we as a board need to create in order to make a recommendation of which solution. And what, at this point, it's, you know, it seems a little bit up in the air to me. Uh, 
I think Stacy helped me a lot in understanding what our role is. But as we make some choices uh, for our, for our airport, for this for a new development master plan, you know, being asked to choose which which one which of the alternatives do I think is is the best and. I, I want to say, but, but what is the specific criteria that we should be using in we order to select, make this choice? We don't make select uh, alternatives. We're not, we're not, right. We don't. Well, we don't do that. The no. PAC is no, consulting the right. agency. It's at the end. They come to us. Nothing with the alternatives. No, no. I, 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 didn't, I didn't state that correctly. Is that we're going to, I think that we are being tasked to endorse whichever it is either adopt or not adopt that's our only choice okay. adopt or not adopt and we will bring more information uh when when that adoption time comes thank you i think stacy you had your hand up uh, yeah i just wanted to ask that we save discussions for the airport for when it's actually noticed and on the agenda i'm thank you stacy yeah, thank you for good point of order <laughs> Uh, any other uh, any other new business? <clears throat> Minor, maybe. Um, Valley View is the airport that is no longer a publicly private owned private uh, access. Now, as of we were just informed earlier this week, last week. Still an airport, but private use. Yeah. Just real quick before we adjourn. A question on the next meeting. I thought there I had a calendar thing for like a work session excuse me, in two weeks. Has that been so removed? Yes. Strategic planning. Okay. Um, so there is. So yes. Our next work session that's not strategic planning will be the same. Thank you. And the strategic planning is online? Is a it's both in person and okay. online. Yes, thank you for that note. And I believe that information is on our website. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Great. Okay, so uh, next on the agenda is uh, agenda input. I think we heard one suggestion uh, earlier in this meeting, which was an update on our communications website, social media, that kind of thing. Are there any other agenda items that board members would be interested in hearing more about from staff. Okay, I don't see or hear anybody adding any topics. And so that brings us uh, to the end of this meeting. I know up next we've got the tour of the R station. Wish I could be there for that. Um, but unfortunately, um, virtual today. So I will adjourn this meeting and uh, hope you guys have a great time on that tour. Thank, Thank you, Catherine. Catherine. All right. Thank you. Speedy recording is.